Have you ever wanted to have more conscious control over your life? Imagine having this continuous feeling of empowerment that you, you can consciously choose how to respond instead of um, being at the effect of life circumstances or, or even your personality traits. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hi, I'm George Cow, and I'm with one of my clients, Moitja Hennigman. Hi, Moitja. Hi, George. Great Thanks to for be being here. here. Yeah. So um, I'm going to read out your bio uh, so that the audience can know a bit about, about your background, and then we'll get going with what you're going to share with us today about having more empowerment over our life. So, um, all right, let me find your bio here. Moita is a mindset coach and a speaker who is passionate about helping people live a more conscious, empowered life and find more fulfillment in their work and in their relationships, most of all with themselves. Uh, she draws on her knowledge of NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, as well as voice dialogue and the psychology of selves and the aware ego. So that's something, Moitza, you might have to explain later to empower her clients to being into being conscious co-creators of the life that they love. So, Moita, I would just love to have you start with whatever idea you want to share with us. This is a work that you, you love doing, and um, I'm just excited for, for the audience to find out more about it. Yes, thanks, George, for that lovely introduction. Um, it's true, I'm very passionate helping my clients um, access more of their personal power. And um, I, I find the, the first step and the crucial step in that process is self-awareness. So I really help my clients um, raise their self-awareness because that gives them more choice. And when we have choice, basically we have more information to make better decisions. And when we have choice, we have um, a sense of more control. So we don't feel like we're just this boat, you know, in the stormy ocean thrown around and we have no control. We actually can, um, we can take charge of our internal state and as well um, as our results. So <clears throat> why well, I find uh, awareness, self-awareness in particular, so important, um, and it, it comes sort of to mean on many levels, um, it's the awareness of the outcome that we want. And that can be a long-term outcome, you know, sort of where, the direction we want our lives to go, but also moment to moment. How do we want to be? How do we want to be in every moment, right? So that's um, first awareness of that, I find. is very important because then we can be intentional in our actions, in our thoughts, um, and, and how we manage our state. Um, I'll explain what it is in a minute. Um, and then also being aware, I, I find it's very important to be aware of our internal landscape, as I call it. So what sort of, what are the different parts of us? And that touches on the, what you mentioned in my bio, the voice dialogue and psychology of selves, which understands a person's psyche as consisting of these many parts or voices. So, just to illustrate that, I'm sure everyone has experienced a situation where they may have been a bit inter conflicted or had ha have had a tough time uh, making a decision. There was perhaps one, one part saying, oh, I really want to do this. And then another one, oh, but did you consider that? Or, oh, but I'm afraid. Or, oh, but it's not safe. So, so many different aspects, right? Many different voices, so to say, in one situation is... Um, it's basically what we are all made of, I think, our, our psyche. And understanding that helps us to not be taken over by any one of these parts, for example, fear, right? By being aware that we have those almost available to us, because there's never just fear. There's always, uh, you know, sort of more empowering selves as well, like confidence or courage or uh, creativity, right? And at the same time, there may be, I don't know, you know, perfectionist or inner critic, etc. Right. So there's like almost this uh, a dance of different selves, and awareness I find brings that sense of power um, that we are in the center, we are in the central position, and that is what is called the aware ego in this uh, terminology. But I like to just call it a central place of awareness, where you are aware of all those selves that you have that are having their input right in your life and you can listen to each one of them but you don't have to um sort of um you know allow any one of them to take full control it's like you're driving a car let's make a car a metaphor for our life right you are in the driver's seat you have all these passengers 
and they can have their say and they, they have their input and they can say, oh, I would like to go this way or that way, but you don't allow any of them to take over the wheel. You are in the driver's seat. And I find that's, that's a really empowering way of, of how awareness can, can help us feel more empowered. But then it goes even, so awareness is the first one. And in, uh, so one, one, yeah, so this is one way of uh, awareness giving us power. And then also knowing that uh, whilst in a situation, perhaps in a situation we're not that happy about, maybe we're anxious about something, or maybe we've been procrastinating, right? We, we feel conflicted and we feel, oh, and, and perhaps um, an inner critic may be really present, right? In that, uh, in that context saying, oh, you never do things right, you never follow through, all that negative barrage, right, of, of comments that can be really deflating. By having awareness, you know that at the same moment, you have a whole other wealth of, you know, energies available to you. So whilst there is that perspective of inner critic, that is not the whole truth. That's not all of what you are, who you are. You, you can know for sure that just as, you know, there is, um, um, what's that, uh, that laws of law of physics, there is always a, a, to every action, there is the same uh, and opposite reaction or something along those lines. So it's the same in this, um, in, in this understanding of, uh, psychology of selves right that when you have one powerful force um, on one side you can be sure there is an equally strong opposing force on the other so and you get to choose how much of each you bring into your response so just very practically right if you have the inner critic so let's say you engage in some sort of challenging project and the inner critic's nature is just to criticize and you know it's it's not all bad in itself, but when it's out of control. So these cells develop at a, at a time of our lives when they were needed or just because that was the example, right, that they had. So if when we were growing up, we may have been exposed to a lot of criticism or maybe it wasn't safe to make mistakes, then the critic is there basically as a, acting as a preemptive strike. So criticizing us first so any other criticism wouldn't touch us in the same way. or um, warning us about everything that might go wrong so we really make sure we do things perfectly and inner critic often teams uh, together with the inner perfectionist so um so we do everything perfectly you know otherwise we may make a mistake and and um and be criticized and that would be painful right so there is this protective uh, um uh, protective uh, intention or function of each of this part but the way it goes about this protecting can be quite difficult uh, to um to live with, isn't it? So through this process of expanding our awareness of these selves, um, and the voice dialogue that I mentioned um, is actually speaking to these selves specifically, finding out more about them. And through that process, we sort of, uh, we take their edge off a little bit. They usually just want to be heard because they are parts of us and they want to contribute to our life. And, and the more we give them sort of this airtime and realize that we are not them, that they are, you know, one perspective, um, the more we are able to balance that out. Um, and um, so I was talking about a specific example, wasn't I? If you engage in a project and the inner critic has a lot of input, say, you know, pointing out everything that could go wrong, you could say, instead of just believing that, oh my God, yeah, all of that could go wrong and be completely in, you know, allowing the critic to completely take over, you can, you know, take on a more powerful sort of this central aware position and say, okay, I hear you critic. I appreciate your input. Yeah, you're pointing out all the potential dangers and I'm really grateful for that. Thank you. However, um, is it true? Is everything that you're saying true? For example, if the critic is saying, you never follow through with anything, right? For example, so why would this be any different? It's better if you don't even start. If you examine, so one way to challenge this would be to ask, um, okay, do I really, is that true? Is that really true? And I would bet you, if you look at the, you know, at your life, at the evidence, you would find an instance, probably several, where you did follow through. So you can see like, okay, actually, no, it's not true. And also another way to challenge it, is it constructive? Is this serving me, believing this critic fully? And actually, well, if I believe this, I would not make any move on my project that is really important to me. 
So no, it's not constructive. Okay, whilst I appreciate you, critic, and I will bear your comments in mind, I choose to, I don't know, bring more courage, for example, into my, into my response, you know, and you br actively bring courage in and move on. Um, yeah, so I find that's one of the, um, the ways to challenge and to really move uh, forward in a more balanced and, and empowered way. Yeah, that's that's really helpful because I know a lot of those watching this are. I mean, I'm glad you talked about the creative project and kind of following through. I mean, a lot of a lot of us here are working on creating an authentic business, and that that takes a lot of uh, follow through, and it also tends to draw a lot of the inner critic. Uh, we're afraid of other people criticizing us, but we also have this critic inside ourselves, which is a lot to deal with. So, how do you? Um, Let's start talking about how you how do you work with clients? How do you like to work with clients to uh, help them move forward and, and kind of get unstuck in these ways? Yeah, so I love helping clients deal with self-sabotage, but in a context of um, What they want to create so it's usually it's, it's always a focus of what's the outcome, right? So clients um, often come to me with um, they want more confidence in you know, whichever area um, I'm very passionate helping uh, people in their career uh, because it's one area that I was quite stuck in and, and I'm just, I just, it makes me glow to see people, you know, be more fulfilled in their career. Um, and also I know that dealing with, you know, either confidence or whichever um, aspect in one life area will impact other life areas because we are one person, right? I see the life like holistic, uh, yeah, from a holistic uh, viewpoint. So how I help them is identify what they really gain clarity on what they really want. Often I find my clients um, come to me quite stuck and sort of, I'm not sure what direction I'm supposed to take. There's so many options and I don't know, what can I create? So it's it's from that point of confusion sometimes and or, or it's also quite confusing when you are in the self-sabotaging pattern. It's like, I want to do so much, but I just don't get to do it. I don't know what's happening. It's like these invisible blocks. And they're like, please help me. It's like, I need, I need help too. Because it's the hardest to see your own blind spots, isn't it? So what I do is help them gain clarity. Um, clarity is quite closely connected for me with awareness, really. So it's clarity or awareness around what they want. Um, awareness for what's standing in between. So that's more of a on a, on a macro level so um yeah it's self-sabotage and then more micro level specifically in a situation when you want to do something and you don't what's happening what's the inner talk what's the uh, mental images because that's what our subconscious mind really responds to and we really want to have our subconscious mind on board supporting us in what we do because otherwise it will hold us back and the primary function of our subconscious mind is to keep us safe, right? To protect us. And anything that isn't um, familiar to us yet is deemed unsafe. So by our subconscious. So it's about practicing. It's about, um, you know, looking at things differently to, to see that, um, yeah, that there is another way of how, different to how we were doing things so far, being flexible, Right, flexibility is a big, um, is very big in, in NLP, which I love. Is yeah, if something isn't working, be flexible and try something else and observe the results. So having that frame of experimentation is very important um, to make progress in life, especially when you're feeling stuck, right? Um, and then I help. Um, a big part of what I do is help clients feel. Uh, no, sorry, not feel. <laughs> build this sense of um, confidence or. It, yeah, this sense of power that they can change things. So first is gain clarity. What do I really want? You know, allowing them themselves to, to dream of, of what would their, you know, ideal outcome really be like and how, what kind of person would they ideally want to be most of the time in their life. Um, and then, yeah, then build confidence to, okay, that's really possible. Wow, I can actually, you know, believing in themselves, they can actually do, do that. And that's by... Um, helping them see how much they really have available to them sort of internal resources and i do um that a lot with state management uh, that's the nlp tool where we um yeah where we connect a specific um trigger either a word a gesture a physical point of the body or anything like that um 
that with a specific state and state in NLP terms is basically a state of mind and body or a feeling even yeah a feeling in more common terms um, so how to so a state of confidence for example would be when you feel confident just for just for yeah understanding um, so I would help clients develop that confidence to feel it's really possible for them to achieve what they what they would like and then it's about mapping things out really create um, action step sort of you know how will i get to where i want to be helping them break things down because it can feel so challenging um you know that big dream that you know that they have or, or even perhaps not a big dream but just like something that seems impossible now like wow feeling confident in that you know um group situation speaking my mind feels impossible so turning that into small enough steps so they feel doable and you know and achievable and then you know inevitably along the way um different obstacles crop up that you know we couldn't envisage before and then dealing with those in the process to get them to where they want yeah that's wonderful so you are uh their cheerleader you are their coach uh you are somebody that they can they can trust to uh share some kind of the help troubleshoot essentially what what's what's going on so Wonderful. Well, if anybody watching this uh, would like to inquire uh, with you, Moita, um, I want to make sure I give you uh, the web, uh, give them the, your website, and also you're on Facebook and Instagram as well. I'll put the links in the notes of the video. But just to um, spell out the website, it's uh, it's your name, MoitaHenigman.com, M-O-J-C-A. So that's your first name. It's spelled M-O-J-C-A-H-E-N. I G M A N dot com, Moita Hennigman dot com. So, Moita, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, I hope those watching have enjoyed this. You may even want to rewatch this to kind of get some of the nuances you have, may have missed the first time. Um, any anything else you want to share as we kind of complete the call? Um, anything? Uh. Yeah, just if people want, you know, if anyone wants uh, more information, check out my website, just like you said, or get in touch. You know, I love uh, speaking to people um, directly as well and, and, you know, get your perspectives and perhaps what, what may, you know, the viewers be struggling with and if they're happy to share, or discuss it. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to discuss that. Um, and I also be, I'm planning uh, to have a workshop series coming up um, at the end of next month. Um, about um, moving from self-sabotage to self-confidence. And there will be a few series, and the first one will focus on um, reforming your inner critic. So, and these I'm are going to be online, online workshops. So that's, yeah. we should also mention that you work with people all over the world. So people yeah. can, uh, you work with people through, through Zoom, just like this. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Well, thank you so much for being here and for sharing with us today. Thank you, George. Thanks for having me.